Nick. And that's Joseph, and today we're here to talk about Teorima, the 1968 classic directed by Pier Paolo Pasolini, uh, which the Criterion Collection has uh, uh, added uh, to its archives as of February 18, 2020. This is a French film. Italian, fuck. I knew that. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. It's, it's Italian. Italian. Uh, the director. Pasolini. Uh, is known for... Oh, many, many. Films. What have I seen of his? I feel like I saw something at a, a theater in Minneapolis. Fellini. You oh, saw that was Fellini. That was uh, Amarcord. Damn. Um, no, Pasolini, uh, I, I, I think he is one of the few people that really challenges uh, what our notion of an auteur is because uh, across a, a wide range of his filmography, he's... Uh, it's kind of hard to pin him down. This is actually part of uh, the middle section of a mythological cycle he did, which includes Medea, starring Maria Callas, and not Tyler Perry, not different spelling, different type of Medea. I know, uh, I know that. As well as Oedipus Rex, which uh, Silvana Magano, who stars in this, was uh, Yocasta, and Laura Betty, who is the I'm probably butchering some pronunciations, uh, who is the maid in this film, was also in Oedipus. Um, so th this film is even, if, if you read about what Pasolini says this film is about, it's very contradictory, much like him, much like his politics. Uh, boiled down, I think you could call this a Marxist fable slash anti, a, a condemnation of uh, bourgeois society, which I, in today's world we'd call elitists or one percenters. Um, okay. Well, part of the marketing strategy, I think, which is funny, is the... in. There's only 923 words spoken in the film. It's oh. almost a silent film. Uh, many of which occur in the very opening sequence where we have uh, the uh, Paolo, who's this industrialist, uh, speaking heatedly with what I believe are reporters, and somebody poses the question, um, whatever the bourgeois do is wrong. And I think this film tries to say, yes, that's true. Um, well, really quickly, this story is about a wealthy family a stranger shows up at their home. A Milanese family, yes, played by Terrence Stamp. Okay. Um, this stranger basically seduces everyone in the house. Mom, dad, brother, sister. And the maid. And the maid. Uh, gives them a taste. He leaves, and they all go fucking crazy. Yeah, yeah, they all are flown yeah. into a... They descend into an existentialist crisis. Because that's what I think the film, at its basis, is about, is um, the, the emptiness of the bourgeois. Okay. So, um, you use the term art house. Yes. So I would, that's how I would describe this. Like, it's definitely <clears throat> a piece of art more so than like a, you know, the acting, the storytelling, it's, it's more of a statement than. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like a, like a narrative that makes sense or <laughs> I oh, enjoyed yeah. it. It was entertaining and it, it definitely is thought provoking, but it's a, uh, it's definitely something to be viewed. And, yeah. and talked about, not necessarily enjoyed. But, oh, I enjoyed this. Film. No, it is That's enjoyable, great. but it's not a. It doesn't really. It didn't take me anywhere. It was more thought provoking. Sure, which, but I, you know, I greatly appreciate that. We never know. You know, Terrence Stamp is never named. We never know if he's an, an angel or a devil. Um, and and if you know, you say he seduces them, and I think lots of people describe it that way. But actually, all of those people are flinging themselves at him in their ways. True. So he's actually True. there to kind of. Provide, Receive. Yeah, to, to provide a pleasure they have never known. And then when he leaves, they all are kind of like, oh, I didn't realize how empty my life was before you were here. That's a good point, actually. Yeah, I mean, I, again, it's a great conversation piece, and, and I think it's deserving of, um, you know, like a re-release and, oh, yeah, the, and, and the, a lot of attention. The previous copy I had of this, I'm so glad they restored this film. It looks so much better than the last copy I had of this did. Um, I'm assuming it was controversial. Oh yes, like so you said. it was. Uh, or I can see why, but by today's standards, it it's kind of. There is no overt like sexual activity happening on screen, really. Um, no, it's all implied. Uh, you which see, which you, is effective. I mean, we see some butt and some you nipple. See, maybe. You see Anna Wyszynski's breasts. Yeah. Oh, and at the very end, the dad. He's the last one to kind of lose it. Yes. And there's a famous scene yeah. right at the end. Massimo Garoti. He's yeah. like walking, which is actually some pretty powerful visuals. He yeah. gets nude in like a train station or a whatever, and goes for a long walk. It appears he's walking through like volcanic ash. I think that's yeah. filmed outside of Mount Etna. Okay. Actually. 
Um, well, the very end is him like just screaming, uh, nude. Into um, the void. Into which, the void, yeah. A primal scream of rage, as many have called it. But you know, so I think there are a lot of interpretations to that scene, and, I, 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 and there are flashes to that volcanic ash as we go through the narrative, and I think that is supposed to uh, signify rebirth. Like, th once they've lost everything, you know, like the phoenix from the ashes, they can be reborn. So I think sure. there's some hope you can see in that scene. And then as we were watching it, I'll, I'll, for some reason, all I could think of was um, Janis Joplin singing Freedom's Just Another Word for Nothing Left to Lose. Okay. Um, uh, also of note, uh, Nanetto Davoli, who was the muse of Pasolini, who I believe he was fucking around with, who left him for a woman and who he punished on film, I think in Arabian Nights, by this awful castration scene. He's Angelino, who's the messenger that announces the arrival and departure of the visitor. Okay. Which I think is notable for, if you like Pasolini. You said this film remind you of, reminded you of The Guest, starring my friend Dan Stevens. Yes, Adam Wingard's The Guest, in, in a very superficial way, of course, but again, this kind of uh, strange visitor who uh, comes upon this, I think, I'd say they're middle-class family, and they all kind of fall in love with him in their ways. It is uh, a good film, I do like it. Um, also, Takashi Miike remade this film, a loose remake of this film in 2001 called Visitor Q, which I definitely don't uh, recommend watching first. Uh, I think that's a really ugly film to look at. I think it was shot on digital. Um, yeah, I don't, this is the kind of film, everything's very obvious. I, I was snickering throughout the whole thing, even re-watching it again, and I think uh, there's a certain camp sentiment even to the seduction scenes. Uh, all these subtexts of literature and art are very um, uh, on the nose, I think. You have um, Terrence Stamp is reading Rambeau, uh, Francis, they're paging through with uh, Pietro the Sun, like the works of Francis Bacon, who is a very famous aggressive atheist and homosexual. Um, and then Tolstoy, uh, Paolo the Patriarch uh, compares the visitor to Gerasim, who's supposed to be the representation of goodness from uh, Tolstoy's The Death of Ivan Ilyich. Um, I don't, there, this, there's a lot to talk about in this I film. I can see that. <laughs> um, I, I greatly enjoy this film. I'm very happy Criterion added this to the collection because they already have um, his Trilogy of Life films, uh, something else I can think of. But th this t Teorima and uh, Mama Roma, very different stylistically, visually, but I, I love them both equally. Great, what would you give it? I'd give the film four and a half out of five. Wow. Uh, Criterion's uh, new 4K restoration, four and a half out of five. And I think it's also worth noting, uh, there are a lot of English, uh, there are a lot of uh, extra features as usual that are worth noting. Uh, there's an alternative English dub version um, with Terrence Stamp's actual voice. Uh, there's audio, audio commentary from Robert S. Gordon, uh, who wrote Pasolini, Forms of uh, Subjectivity. Uh, there's a 1969 uh, intro from Pasolini, there's a 2007 Terrence Stamp interview, and uh, there's an interview with John David Rhodes, who wrote Stupendous Miserable City, Pasolini's Rome. And I think we, you know, uh, we should have brought up originally, this premiered at the 1968 Venice Film Festival, it was later condemned by the Pope, uh, and Laura Betty, who plays the maid, won Best Actress uh, for her work there. Good for her. Mm -hmm. And you, you had a lot to say about Silvana Mangano, we didn't get to talk to her, I love her look in this, uh, she looks crazy, but... She looks like a mummy with Marlena Dietrich's face painted on it. Yep, what sure. I think you could describe that sure, as. But yeah. and you you said there's not a lot of emotion, but there as Silvana Mangano goes into her stupor and she starts finding men to fuck around with that look like Taryn Stamp. She has this one scene driving alone in a car in between Triss where she like snarls and disgusts at herself, which I don't know. I thought that felt very human. Okay. Are you done? I'm done. Fantastic. Bye. <laughs> Bye.